Hi guys, this is Wade. This is my first video to talk about Android Sense, which is Google's solution for IoT. The benefits of Android Sense are making an application on IoT device like a Raspberry Pi. The developer experience is the same as developing Android apps. If you are currently are an Android developer, the learning curve for Android Sense can be short. Before we start, there are some requirements you have to prepare. The first thing you need is the latest version of Android Studio. And then you need a Raspberry Pi. You might need a keyboard, mouse, and monitor to connect the Raspberry Pi. Also, in this video, I will write a sample code to switch the LED line, so it's better have a breadboard and the LED kit. You also need a micro SD card to install the Android Sense OS. Next thing we have to do is download CR Utility on the Android Sense console. You can find the link on the description below. Over Google Android Sense Console to find the link to download it. When you arrive Android Sense Console, click Menu Tools. You can find the Download button in the center of the screen. Unzip the file you download. There are three files for different operation systems. Because I use Windows, so I click Android Sense Set Up Utility Windows.exe. You can see the command line with the pop up. Answer one for the following three questions to download default Android Sense image for Raspberry Pi. Then insert the micro SD card into your computer. The tool will detect the card. Select E and say yes to flash it. This process needs to take some time. The next question is set up Wi-Fi, but this option requires an Ethernet cable to connect to the router. It is not a good option for me, so I will skip this setting to use another way to set up Wi-Fi. Then insert the SD card into the device. Once you power out the device, you can see the boot screen. After it starts, you can see the very simple dashboard. Click Connect to Network button to turn on the Wi-Fi. Click Connect button instead of hit Enter key, because in here, Enter key does nothing but make a new line. Once the device is connected to the router, go back to the dashboard to remember the IP address. We will use it later. Open a terminal and type ATB Connect, the IP address. This will turn on ATB Remote Connect to the device. Then type ATB Device check it is a real connector. You can use all the ATB Connects, like ATB LS, ATB Short. Short command is similar to SSH command. They allow you remote control a machine. Next thing we have to do is build a circuit. This is our first video, so let us just try a simple circuit as this diagram. First, use a jumper wire to connect a ground pin on the Pi to the blue row on the breadboard. Then connect a 360 ohm resistor from the same load to the next rail. And then push the LEDs legs into the breadboard 
with the short leg on the, the same column of the resistor. Lastly, compare the circuit by connecting pin 18 to the long leg of the LED. If you are the beginner about circuit, I recommend you click the link on the description to read the tutorial. OK, all the preparations were done. Let's start coding. Open Android Studio. Create a new project. Let's name it Android Things Study. Because I use Kotlin language instead of Java, so I click Include Kotlin Support. Then I click Phone and Tablet and click Android Things and change the SDK version to Oreo. If you can't see this option, it means your Android Studio is too old. You have to update it. Then select Android Things Empty Activity. And then use the default values to finish this wizard. Once the project was created, open Android Manifestor.snl because the app needs to access GPIO general purpose input output, which is a part of peripheral I.O. So you have to add permission for count.google.android.things.permission.use peripheral I.O. At the time I record this video, Android Studio doesn't support autocomplete for Android Things permission yet. So you have to type by yourself or copy it from Android Things documents or from my sample code. The information is provided in the description. Then open activity main.snl, remove hello world and drag a switch to here. Rename it to LED switch. Change the test to LED switch 2. Then open main activity.kt. Add the two properties LED switch and the LED GPIO. Then on inside of uncreate, get LED view by find view by its ID. Create manager variable and assign it from peripheral manager that get instance. Then call open GPIO to get a GPIO object. Remember that we use BCM18, so type BCM18 for the pin name and set the duration for out with initially low power. Then add a switch check the change listener, change the LED GPIO value to equals is checked. Now hit the wrong button, select the device. Android Studio start to build an APK and use ADB install command to install APK on the device via Wi-Fi. So let's see what it looks like run on the device. You can see it launch the app on the Raspberry Pi and show the layout of main activity we just designed. Now the LED line is off, but once we hit the switch, you can see it line up and hit the switch again, it crunched. You can see all the software development is as same as developing mobile apps. It really leverages the value of learning Android. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.